This is a level two, 240 volt AC, 40 amp pedestal charger with two cables. And as I zoom out, you can see that there's a similar unit located here. And there are multiple parking spaces that are demarcated for electric diesel charging. One, two, three, and four at the Anthology apartment complex. You can see this is a three-story complex like this. And if we swing around here, we can see that the Nissan Leaf I'm driving currently could be charging on that, but I resorted to level one charging because those SEMA Connect chargers are actually level two. Now, level two can add substantial amounts of charge to an electric vehicle like this, but level one is appropriate for overnight charging. And as we can well imagine, you can see those chargers behind the leaf there. Once I get the invitation code from the office, I can attach it to the SEMA Connect app and then engage in level two charging which is up to seven times faster than extension cord charging using this goofy um, EVSE and extension cord setup into the outlet uh, next to the door on our patio right here. Fortunately, that GFI enhanced um, NEMA 15R dual socket there is rain protected and we have an angel protecting the cable. And I need to pressure wash the algae off this patio but other than that, um, these ultra high efficiency LED Christmas lights are emblematic of the super ultra high efficiency electric vehicle here, the 2019 Leaf SV. And this is my third Nissan Leaf, and I absolutely love it. Strange to love an inorganic object that doesn't have a life, but you want to like the vehicle you drive. There's a few cosmetic blemishes on this one. The dealer will repair them uh, in the coming weeks. And I look forward to that, including the cracked front window. All right, I want to describe the cam back design here for aerodynamics. So if you see the profile edge here and this extension off the rear window, which comes out like this, these are all designed to smooth airflow. This setup is designed to smooth airflow off the back of the vehicle. And you can see that it's symmetrical. And these, what they call shark fin antennas, are also aerodynamic because they can cut through the air. Right? And if we follow along the profile edge here, you can see that it's roughly flat like a table. And that there's a very smooth transition between the front window and the leading edge of the metal. And that's important in order to reduce uh, turbulent roll at the boundary layer where gas, as you're moving forward, striking the front of the vehicle would catch and form a turbulent uh, vacuum. So if this can be laminar and smooth, it reduces drag losses as you're going highway speeds. It's more important at speeds above 50 miles per hour or around 90 kilometers per hour. We see similar tricks. Okay. Even this profile in the hood here is designed to channel air around the windshield wiper blades uh, in order to create a scoop effect that helps to channel air over the center. And if we do a swipe like this, you can kind of see the frontal area and then analyze the geometry of the cross flow here and you can see why they did that. Looking at the side profile, we see a skirt that goes very low to the ground and butts up right to the rear fender here. And what this does is it prevents drag effects from the tire and wheel from creating drag, specifically on the rear wheel. By channeling air around the rear wheel, this further reduces drag and enhances the range of the battery electric vehicle. Looking from the passenger side, we previously discussed the side view mirror trip with the headlights, but if we zoom out, you're gonna see a chevron detail. So as air hits this panel gap, it actually accomplishes what's called down blending with the rear arrow here. So specifically this chevron produces a pressure relief formation 
and it interacts with the taillights again to produce a laminar smooth flow as air curses across the back of the vehicle at speeds higher than 35 miles per hour where aerodynamics start to play a significant role. One very interesting omission from the aerodynamic principle is this rear wiper, which uh, it would require uh, a smooth kind of triangular shaped wedge to smooth off the front edge because what's going to happen here is as the laminar flow comes off the back, you want it to do what's called a clean sheet fall off. And this is going to inhibit this. Now, extending the rear wing out like this does accomplish a laminar projection that may avoid that. And computational fluid simulations that they ran at Nissan uh, may have been able to uh, avoid the drag penalty of this oblique object on the aero surface. But um, that's subject to further research. If we analyze the back edge, you see a very complex three-dimensional profile here. Now, part of that's aesthetic, but again, part of it's functional. And we'll, we'll notice a small detail here. This is the high-definition backup camera. So that um, CMOS sensor and its wide-angle lens assembly engages when you put the transmission uh, shifter into reverse and then data is streamed through the multifunction display so that you can see what's behind the vehicle. Here we see additional cosmetic blemishes that need to be repaired. The most significant cosmetic blemish is a, is a minor accident that the previous owner had right here and you can see pitting and rusting and chipping and flaking of this painted sheet metal and it's also a crease right here. Now this resulted in a pretty good net reduction in price so we're just going to have them fix that there's there's additional small small cosmetic blemishes so i paid the dealer a couple of hundred dollars extra to fix all of this stuff in a previous segment i was commenting on the rear under effect spoilers but if we look here you can see the smooth underbody combines with this rear diffuser and that reduces drag by enabling slipstream formations of air to go under the vehicle and form a laminar flow out of the back instead of forming a turbulent vacuum. So anything they can do to cause air to slip off the back of the vehicle reduces drag and enables the vehicle to go farther per charge, which increases range in electric vehicles. One of the details of this vehicle that I didn't mention in any of my previous videos was the inclusion of energy efficient Michelin tires. The exact tire I would choose to buy on these wheels if I was replacing them. And they have quite a bit of tread life left, meaning that the previous owner changed the tires because there's no way these have 47,000 miles on them, especially not in this front wheel drive high torque motor setup. Now this steel wheel has a very clever industrial design with painted relief. And what they're trying to do is accomplish brake venting. So that's a ventilated disc in the center. And this is a 17 inch wheel. That's a R215 50 series R17, if, if you're wondering. So the 215 is the width of the tread pattern. The 50 is the height aspect from the edge of the wheel to the surface of the tire or how thick the tire is and the radius or R part means that it's 17 inches in diameter. I happen to really like these these wheels. Um, they're uh, very aerodynamic so what they did there is they painted in dark gray sections that aren't polished and what that does is it, it allows heat venting of the axle uh, rotor and caliper while also minimizing aerodynamic penalties. Now Nissan puts zero emissions on here, referencing that the electric powertrain has ultra low emissions, but it's not zero emissions. Electric vehicles are not eco-friendly. It just turns out that the Nissan LEAF has the lowest net lifetime environmental footprint of any common four passenger vehicle sold to the general public worldwide. So is it eco-friendly? No, it just doesn't produce as much pollution during its life cycle as a conventional gasoline vehicle with similar capacities. 
So the Nissan Leaf, if you're picking a vehicle, is the least environmentally damaging, especially when you consider the lack of gasoline consumption, lack of oil changes, and all that it doesn't contain a transmission and all of the other energy intensive uh, components of a traditional internal combustion gasoline fueled vehicle.